Hey everyone, what's up? Welcome back to the channel and in today's video we are going to design swipe to delete interaction using Figma's interactive variant feature. Um, swipe to delete is a really common interaction pattern in iOS apps but it's also been picking up now in Android ecosystem as well. So it'll be really fun to see how we can design it. Um, on a side note, for this interaction to happen you need to have interactive components enabled for your Figma device. So how to know if you have interactive components enabled on your Figma system? Just go to your prototyping tab, don't select anything, just go to your prototyping tab and you will see this panel here which says interactive components if it, and if it's enabled then it will show you a tick. If it's not there in your system then this panel itself will not show up. So that means you have to request Figma to enable it on your system. Just google search Figma interactive component, there will be a form, just fill that up and within a few days they will enable it on your system. So you have to have this enabled on your system to do all the interactions that we are going to do. And that being said, without further ado, let's get started. So we are in Figma right now and we are going to design this swipe to delete feature for an email app like Gmail. And for that I have already set up a few things, let me show you around. So first of all we have an iPhone 11 Pro Max artboard. We have a status bar and a search bar. Now I'm not going to animate these two anyway. These are just the shell of the app. Um, the next thing that we have here is these components. So we have an image, a sender's name, some dummy text and a delete icon. And as of now, I have not grouped them together. It's just floating here and there. So we're going to combine them together using Figma's auto layout. And if you are new to auto layout, you don't know anything about auto layouts, I would highly recommend you to go and check out my previous videos on auto layout. I've explained everything about auto layout that is there to know. And we're going to use auto layout because it's just easy and make things more clean. So yeah, let's get started. So the first thing that we need to do is combine this and this text together, the name text and the dummy text. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select these two together and I'm going to hit shift and A on our keyboard. And as soon as you hit shift in a it will automatically convert it into an auto layout and you will see the auto layout symbol here on the left layers panel now if you see there's a distance between them it's a vertical auto layout and the distance between the two components is five we don't want five we can just do two let's do two and uh, let me just quickly show you what happens when you resize it so if you see when i am trying to resize it nothing is happening because we are not told inside element what to do when the parent frame try to resize so we'll select this element and we want both of them to be uh, both of these two text to be uh, what do you say changing depending on the width of the frame so instead of uh, mixed or fixed content we'll do fill container so now what will happen is if i come here and resize the parent frame it will try to resize accordingly so if you see the text is resizing according to your uh, parent frame now the next thing that we need to do is we need to combine this frame that we have created just now and this image together. So I'm going to select these two and I'm going to hit shift and A again on the keyboard to create an auto layout. Now an auto layout has been created. Now if you see this image is sticking to the top, we don't want that. So we can change the alignment here. We want it to be center left. Now it's awesome. Um, if you see there's just too much gap between this image and the text. So what we need to do is it's set to 23. We want it to be a little less. So we'll do 12. Perfect. And we also want some padding across or around the entire element. So what we're going to do is we're going to come here and give it an even padding of let's say uh, 12. Perfect. So now this is how it looks like the entire component. We can also give it a fill. Uh, the entire frame can have a fill. So I'm come, I'll come here and I'll um, select the fill option. It's now selected automatically to white, but we want it to be same as the background of the app. So we'll select this and now this is how it's going to look like. Perfect. Uh, let me just quickly show you what happens if I resize it. If you see when I'm trying to resize the entire thing, um, the text again is not resizing because for this parent element, we have not told what happened when we resize the entire frame. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the inside elements, the children's. And it's set to fix width. We're going to change it to fill container. Perfect. So now what will happen is it will maintain all the uh, specifications that you have given and will still try to resize thing. So if you see, it's resizing the entire thing and the image also is moving in the center one. So this is really nice for responsive design. Now that's done. 
what we need to do is we need to make sure the uh, width of this component that we have built using auto layout is same as the width of the artboard. So the artboard width is 414 and the frame width as of now is 422. So what we're going to do is we're going to just change it to 414 so that perfectly fits in the width of the um, artboard. Okay, great. So now this is done. What we need to do next is we need to uh, create this delete icon. So we have the delete icon separately. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first create an artboard. So I'll just hit A. And what I'm going to make sure that the height of this artboard is same as the height of this component. So this component's height is 96. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm just going to change it to 96. Okay. And width wise, I'm going to make it to something like 120. So it's going to come and sit in the right hand side of the uh, component. So that is there. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change it to uh, probably something like a red color. Yeah, that looks good. And I'm going to drag it into the center and I'm going to align it in the center and I'm given a property of center center in the constraints. So it's always remain in the center, even if you resize things. Awesome. I'm going to rename it to trash icon. So I'm going to just change it to delete the entire frame that contains this delete. And I'm going to rename this one to message body or body mail. That's fine. Cool. So now this and this is ready. So what are we going to do now is we're going to select these two elements, body and the delete component, and I'm going to combine them in a frame. So I'll hit option command G on my keyboard. And they are now clubbed in a frame. Let's call it mail default. Okay, perfect. Now what we want is this to be inside. So I'll just select this uh, delete icon and I'll just move it around so that it's just inside. Okay. And if you see the bounds of the uh, entire frame is slightly bigger. So just resize it from here. Perfect. So now if you see the entire bounds is 414, which is the width of the artboard that we have here. Perfect. Um, what we need, need to do is that the entire idea is that when we swipe this upper part on the left we should be able to see this so we need to move the body part up and the delete icon down so i'll just do it from the layers panel here so it's there uh, if i just hide the body option you'll see the delete option is behind it so when we slide this we'll be able to reveal the delete icon that's the whole idea okay so now this is done what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna create a copy of this this entire group and this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the frame that is, uh, that contains the body. So basically this one, the body one, and we're going to call it mail default. We're going to call it swiped. Okay. I'm going to select the body part of this and I'm going to move it in the left till we have the component. Yeah. And if you see, you're still able to see this swiped component. So just enable clip content here. So I'll enable clip content here and you won't be able to see anything that is going beyond. Same thing for here, just enable clip content. So clip content just hides the component that is moving out of the frame. Okay. So now when we swipe this, we will see this and this icon will reveal. Now what we're going to do is we're going to select both of these uh, frames and we're going to come here, click on the down icon and we'll say create multiple components. So we'll create a multiple component here and two components have been created and now combine them as a variant. So this is where variant and interactive variants will come in picture. So just do this, combine them as a variant and you have a component ready. We have this state and we have a swiped state out of this. So we have a default state and we have a swiped state. I'll just move it up and down. Perfect. Uh, so now what we need to do is we need to just wire it up. So let me first show you how it looks like. It will be available in your um, uh, local components. So you can just drag and drop here and center line this is how it's gonna look like we have not wired this up but this is how it's gonna look like perfect so let me just delete it for now and go back to our layers panel and now let's start the uh, wiring part so first what we're gonna do is we're gonna select the uh, mail default component and we're gonna select the body option of this uh, first component and what we're gonna do we're gonna go to the prototyping tab and from here, we're going to drag our arrow 
to this state and instead of on tap you need to do on drag and if you have interactive variants enabled then you will see this option change to otherwise you won't see it so this is the option for interactive variants uh, smart animate ease in and 600 millisecond maybe we can do ease out back that gives us a light uh, springy animation so that's perfectly fine 600 millisecond smart animate so these are the properties and what we also want to do is when we come here and select again the body one and when we drag it back we should be able to go to this state again so again instead of on tap we want on drag and change to perfect same everything everything is same perfect so what's what we have built as of now is if we drag this component slide it over here slide over here with the drag animation this should work now let's quickly see how it's looking so i'll go in my um, assets panel and i'll drag this here central line it and let's quickly see how it looks like in the play option okay so this is our app and let's see what happens so if i am swiping it here swiping it here see it's working perfectly fine i'm able to swipe here and here right so that's our first thing uh, the next thing that we also want to do is um, when let's say we have swiped it on the left and we don't do any action then it should automatically close as well so what i'm going to do is for that i'm going to select this entire artboard here so the entire artboard you have to select the entire artboard always remember and what we want to do is go to the prototyping tab and we'll link it back to the previous component and instead of on tap we want to do on delay after delay so make sure that your entire artboard is selected and you have selected after delay and may probably will do some 1000 millisecond so if you don't do anything till 1000 millisecond this will swipe back to this stage so that's the default behavior if you have just swiped up and you have not done any action it will go back to its original state you change to smart animate ease out back i think this is perfect now let's quickly see what happens in our prototyping tab so we have the component here i'll swipe it on the left and i'll leave it and it'll automatically close right if you see after 1000 milliseconds it's automatically closing so this is perfectly nice right so our first part is done what i'm gonna do as of now is i'm just gonna replicate so since this is a component that's the best part of it i'm gonna replicate it a bunch of time and I'm going to override these images and text and fill this entire thing. So let's quickly do that. So I'm just going to hit command D, command D, and I'm just going to create a bunch of it. Perfect. I'm going to select everything, move it a little bit up, and I'm just going to quickly do a change of icon, I mean, override of these icons and these images and this text. Okay. So let's quickly do that. So now we have set up our entire artboard. This is how it looks like. Uh, I just override all the components like images and the text so that it looks slightly different. But this is how the entire app is looking now. Let's quickly see how the prototyping is working in the prototyping tab. So in the prototyping tab, if you see all the components are here. Now if I just drag it, drag it on the left. See, all of them are automatically closing as well. Just one component and it's doing all these things automatically. And again, our swipe, normal swipe is anyway there. So perfect. So I think our 80% of the job is done. There's one more small thing that we want to do that may will enhance this entire interaction is that let's say if I click on the close icon, then that element should go away from the stack and the other thing should move up. So that will give us a more realistic feel. So to do that, what we need to do is I'll just select this uh, artboard, the entire iPhone 11 Pro Max artboard, and I'm going to duplicate it. So I'll just hit option and just drag it that's an easy way of duplicating things okay so this will be the second stage and what i'm going to do is let's say if i swipe this i mean i delete this component then this should remove from our stack and everything else should move up right so let's just do it perfect yeah so what's happening is if i delete this component uh, then we will move to this state and I'll just show you how to wire this up and this will move everything up. Okay. 
so next thing let's what we want to do so this is our starting stage deletion we should move to this stage so i'll go to my prototyping tab next and in this prototyping tab as some of you might know that we can do multiple interaction in one uh, element itself so what i'm going to do next is i'm just going to come here in our component i'll just double click this and what i'm going to do is uh, this delete part that you have so this component contains two part body and delete I'll select the delete option, the delete uh, frame. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag an element here from here. And I want to do on tap, navigate to smart animate, ease out 600 millisecond. This is perfectly fine. So what we are saying is when we tap on this icon, we should move to this stage. So all our components are here, but when we tap, it should move to this stage. So we have a couple of options in this entire thing. Let me quickly recap. First thing is, if I swipe here, then I come to here. If I swipe back, I come to here. If I don't do anything, then it automatically close. And if I click on this icon, then we uh, move to this stage. So this is how it's going to look like. Now let's quickly see how it's working in the prototyping tab. So I'm going to the prototyping tab. And if I just swipe everything left, first of all, it automatically closes. If I swipe left and right, then that is also working. And the third element we have said that if we delete it, then we should move to the next one. So if I just do it here and I click on delete one minute, you see everything is moving up. So actually you can do that delete action to anyone, but uh, then the movement will be random. So for example, I can do delete this one as well, but if you see it's moving up, so it's not working properly. So you need to make sure that the element that you're swiping is the same that you have deleted. The same thing, delete, move up. So this is a nice interaction that works. So we have completed everything. Just to quickly recap, what we have done is we have added a bunch of interaction in these ones. Swipe between these two states. A default state after 1000 milliseconds to go back to this if we don't do any action. And if you click on this delete button, then we move to this stage where we have deleted the third element. And since we have linked everything to auto animate, this is moving automatically up with a nice animation. So that's how it's done. And that's it for today. If you like this video, uh, do try to recreate it. Tag me on my socials and I'll come up with the next video really soon. So take care and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.